Do you ever get worried about that? Because, I mean, you've had so much success, and, and you're about to fight for a, a world title soon, aren't you? Yeah, uh, October 27th on uh, Destiny is the world title. So, right, and it's WBC or WMC? Uh, no, WBC, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, do, I, do I ever get worried that I'm buying into my bullshit, basically? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, you know. So I guess, you, you know, like... The thing is, I still have people that I look up to, you know, that will tell me straight, you know. Yes, thank I, God for I, that. I do still have mates that will fucking put shit on me. Yeah. <laughs> it's so important to yeah, have Yeah, yeah. Like, I, you know, my uh, business partner, he owns the fight center with me, Jarvi. You know, he'll fight. <laughs> he can be really hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> like, sometimes, I, like, if I'm being pain, he'll go, fuck off your fucking annoying and it's like so genuine he's so genuine about telling me that i'm annoying it's like oh man (laughs) whereas most people won't tell me that you know what i mean um and dan my coach will will tell me you know you know just tell me what i need what i what i want to hear he'll yeah you know he'll he'll bring me bring me back down um yeah and i i think that's important um but there is only a few people that i'll take that off you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, most other people, I'd, I won't, and that probably comes down to an ego thing as well. It's like, the fuck do you think you are talking <laughs> to me that way? You know. Well, I mean, and you go through a lot to get to where you've got to. You've done a lot of shit, and and I think that's a tough thing too, because I think when you get into that kind of higher levels of, of pushing through that to get to where you've got to, there aren't a lot of people that have done what you've done to get there. No. So yeah, you're in a kind of a weird you know, range of people that you can listen to and people that you probably shouldn't. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, I, I guess at the end of the day, it's like, you can't just listen to everyone because everyone's, you know, everyone's a fucking part-time expert, you know. Yeah, I mean. Um, so, you and, you know, you can't take it all on, so you do have to be picky about who you're, who you're taking advice off and who's, whose opinion matters to you. Because, you know, like I said, everyone fucking has one. Um, and some people just don't want the fuck they're talking about as well you know oh you should have done this you should have that like shut shut up you know oh he was i was talking to jake um jake lund he just fought charlie barb and lost and he said i spoke to him on the phone afterwards and was you know i I sort of gave my opinion on how it all went he goes oh man there were so many people saying oh you just didn't look like you you know like oh it didn't look like the jake we know you know and uh, and he goes man i was just so sick of fucking hearing it i'm like yeah, but what the fuck do they matter? You know, yeah, like yeah, who the yeah. fuck are they? They just paid for a ticket and sat there, and now they have an opinion. Like they didn't. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they didn't know what the ins and outs were of the preparation and what happened. And, you know, so. And always in situations like that, like in grieving a loss of any kind, you're always trying to look for an excuse. You know mm. what I mean? You're always trying to look for a reason of what happened so that you can plan for it and improve the next time. And a lot of time, there's just no fucking. There's nothing you can do about it. Just get back in there, work mm. hard again, and just hope for the best next time. You know yeah. what I mean? And keep well, you touched putting on an in the work. Interesting point before we. Um, where you were, well, we were talking about uh, the basically trying your best, you know what I mean? As long as you try, and you don't, you never know. You can think something, you know, like, and basically, it's 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 how you feel about yourself at night. That I don't remember exactly what you said, but basically, it's how you feel with yourself when you go to bed and you know what kind of person you are. That's what matters yeah, most. You know, kids, you did your best. Tell the kids all the time, like, you know, I probably shouldn't be telling other people's kids, like, if someone's picking fucking deal with it you know like <laughs> don't go to the teacher just fucking deal with it like because these kids are coming in doing that kids class going i obviously don't say fucking because they're like six years old <laughs> but you know if they're getting picked on at school or whatever i go man you're just enough for yourself like don't worry about the teacher don't worry it's okay like the only thing that matters is when you go to bed you know that you know you're happy with yourself and it's the same yeah. same when you're older you know like you might break a law we realize it doesn't matter you know what some laws are, are there for like maybe reasons to protect the overall whereas if you break it as long as you're a good person at the end of the day when yeah. you go to bed that's what that's what you're going to care about it's the same as when you walk out of the ring you know when you didn't give your all yes like, yes exactly when you fin- when you finished the fight and you lost and you lost because you didn't try your hardest that's when you feel fucking depressed and you start to question who you are and yeah you know it's it's at the end of the day fighting for like a lot of time for me is like it's a test of personal character fuck yeah man you know it's, it's like, almost probably the most uh, that i've encountered in my life definitely anyway. apart from like war yeah you know apart yeah, from man. going to war that's a real test because that's yeah. that's death you know yeah. Good, like high chance of death but 
you know, this is a, this is probably as close as we can come, really. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if at the end of the day, like I had a fight in, I fought Steve Bihar in Adelaide for the second time. I did, I had two years off or something, came back, went down for this uh, eight man Adelaide and got Steve Bihar in the first one. The first time I fought him, he, I know he's tough. I must have knocked him down like eight times the first time we fought and he just kept getting up, kept getting up. That's disheartening. Yeah, no, he, no, he just kept, yeah, it was like, he was <laughs> tough. What do bones. I have to do to yeah, get rid of you? That, that was it. It was like, you know, he's so, you know, he's very determined. And next time we fought, he obviously has gone to work in the gym. He was just so strong, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. so strong. And, um, and I, I couldn't deal with it, you know. I I hit him with again. He's so tough. I I need him in the first round. I need him with like pulled his head down and just fucking need as hard as I could in his face. And his nose, I could see it. He came up and his nose was like sideways on his face. Oh my! You God. see the after picture. He's just got two black eyes <laughs> and a sideways nose. You know, but um, yeah, but he I literally mean. just went blew his nose and then you know kept coming back and he knocked me down maybe the second round and then I knew from there like I didn't. I didn't give 100% in the rest of that fight. But it was a perfect thing because up until that point, I was just beating everybody. Yeah, like, yeah. And I'd, I'd, I had no idea what what hard work was because I was, whether it was natural ability, like athletic ability, or it was like natural aggression that was always getting me over the line because mm. I don't find it very hard to want to hurt someone in the ring. You know what I mean? Where some people, it was really hard to bring it out of them. You know, whereas yeah. I don't, that that's that's easy for me, you know. Um, you're so a psycho. Whether, that's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, whether like, and it's not a personal thing, it's just fucking yeah, story, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, but with uh, with that one, you know, I, I was I was outgunned completely. He'd done more work than me and I'd sort of basically shut off a little bit. I kept yeah. getting up. You know, we did it twice, I think. I kept getting up, but more out of like, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna finish. I'm just gonna finish. But finishing isn't good enough. Yeah, you know what I mean. Finishing isn't isn't why I went there. I didn't go yeah, down. I, did, I went down there to try my hardest. You know, if I got knocked out, I was trying my hardest, and I got like clean knocked out. That'd be different. But I got mm. knocked down, got back up, and then basically gave was running on sixty to seventy percent for the rest of the fight. Just enough to get by. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, he's not gonna he's not gonna stop me. But that's not good enough. You know, and I knew yeah. it. And that like. That may, really made me question myself after that as to where, you know, what's, what am I doing? Why, do, why am I doing this whole thing? You yeah. know, like I'm supposed to be some fucking legend. That was my first ever loss after however many fights. And um, I'm, supposed to, I'm supposed to be awesome. I'm supposed to be beating all these guys. And all of a sudden I just got like fucking embarrassed basically. Yeah, you know? I mean. other people, Other people were like, oh, I mean, it wasn't that bad of a fight, but to me it's embarrassing because it wasn't Well, because you know, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, you know inside. Exactly, uh-huh. like you always know. Yeah. The next fight I went and fought in New Zealand and I lost, but there was like, there was nothing left in me when, you know, I, I like pretty much had to get carried out of the ring. My leg was fucked and I was like out the back almost going into shock because my leg was Bye. like so fucked I couldn't walk for weeks after that fight oh my god um, yeah. but you know I didn't care like it was like oh I gave you know I gave 110% it was so important for me to have that fight yeah. especially after the one before even though it was two losses in a row it was like okay this this is what I need to have because now I know where I know where my boundary is yeah. you know and it, I, well I didn't even find it because if I, I would have kept going I was still chasing the other guy even though I was behind on points my leg was fucked. You know, I was still running around after the other guy and lost like unanimously. So I was like, okay, I know, I know where I'm at, you know, I know. And you know that you're capable of pushing to that ultimate limit that's as right. far as you can. Yeah, and you, fuck me. You, like you said before, you never know. And yeah, it's through experience. That's mm. the only way you find out where that is, is yeah. from actually doing it. You can tell yourself, I'd fucking do this, you know. <laughs> yeah. I would never give up. I'm the fucking man. I'm ready to die, you know. Yeah. But until you get to that point, until you've experienced that and you've and you've lived true to your word, you never know mm. like what you're actually capable of. Yeah, man. And and as you say, what's really interesting about that is that like, I mean, you literally were pretty much at the limit, but you still like there was still more to go potentially. I yeah, mean, you'll well, I mean, never actually know how the, far you could no, go. No, that's right, and that's yeah, a good that's thing as well. Man. You know, like yeah. the you know, it was hard enough. Like 
most people would have given up, but I kept going. Most most top level fighters would have given up, and so. potentially even yourself. Six weeks earlier, would that's have given right. Up if I hadn't experienced that, that yeah. and the absolute fucking disappointment that comes along with it, yeah, you know, if you don't experience that, then you what don't did know. you do to make that change? Did you like bring other mentality into your fight camp, or did no. you just consciously be aware? I don't want to feel like that again. Yeah, I think I think so. You mm-hmm. know, I think that was all it was. Just like a lot of self reflection after a loss, and not just a loss, but just the not not giving all that I thought that I'm capable of. You yeah. Know? And it's like, well, I have to prove that I can do it now because yeah. I've never had to really do that. Fought hard. I'd had a hard fight and fought hard guys, but I've always been winning, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Um, really for the most part because I'd, I'd always won, you know, but to be losing and to be losing the entire fight and then still be, you know, now all I need to do from there to to you know, transfer that into like going away, saying what we were saying before, you can be the toughest motherfucker, but it doesn't matter, it's not going to win your fights, mm-hmm. is take that mentality and aggression and um, uh, what do you call it? integrity and apply it to the fight style. So fight style being no one's going to touch me, no one's going to hit me, I'm going to move yeah. like like a world champion and not uh, like a like a tough motherfucker you know yeah. what i mean yeah yeah so shit yeah oh and uh, that's what the whole thing is i mean like you're creating a self as we all are as you start like going through your life you're creating you collect memories that are working for you you get rid of shit that doesn't work for you you keep adding it on but what's interesting about that is that like your growth comes mostly from self-reflection not mm. necessarily just experience because you can have experience after experience but not learn shit from them and keep you know, attacking the same way. Like imagine that, imagine the type of person, like if you had gone into that fight and lost because you gave it 60% Mm. and then just the second one, the first fight that, and you kind of gave it 60%, but you didn't listen to that voice that Mm. told you you could have done better. Instead, you're like, fuck that guy. Like fucking my camp wasn't good enough. My fucking trainers weren't Mm. loud enough, whatever it is. Mm. Like you get any amount of excuses why that didn't work. You wouldn't have learned that lesson and possibly you would have had another fight exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. Like, and I, and I don't know if it's just the fight game or if it's the type of person you are. And that's probably what gets you to the level you're at now is that you are constantly working on that self-reflection. So every time anything happens, it's like, now how do I make this better for myself? Well, you wonder, like, there are guys who fight over and over and they lose and they keep showing up and everyone knows they're, you know, tough and whatever. But, you know, you, it makes you question why they're fighting, yeah. you know, because I fight to win, you know, whereas other people are happy that they just got in there and had to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't understand those people myself. Well, like, I guess for them it's just... You know, I guess, look, fighting's fighting's hard. Like, most people don't fight. And to constantly, you know, not, not, I'm not going to be defeated. Even though I lost, I'm not going to be defeated and keep showing up and keep showing up. So, man, if you, if you just took that mentality and put it to not just I'm not going to be defeated, but I'm not going to be I'm defeated. not going to be actually <laughs> defeated, you know? Like, maybe like, I should try and win. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, like, it's obviously, it takes yeah, some no, resilience. Yeah, how you know? fucking tough are you to get in there and just get smashed constantly? Yeah, every time. You know, it's like you're a tough <laughs> motherfucker, but, you, you know, fighting, for me, fighting's not just, I, and I guess it doesn't matter whether, what it's for me, it's what what it is for them. Who the fuck am I to say what fighting is to anybody else? Yeah. But, you know, for, for them, but like, I would, I think you just get so much more satisfaction out of fucking winning. Yeah. And not yeah. going out there copping an ass beating and be like, yeah, but I didn't give up. Yeah, you know? but I still went for it. Yeah, like yeah. we all know what you can do. We all know you're tough. You don't need to prove it anymore. You know you're tough because you've done it the last fucking 30 fights. Yeah. Now go and win. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You can, but you're just not, you're not applying the right attitude. You're not training properly. Well, do you think that in the same way that like... Uh, uh, poor old Ronda Rousey. I feel bad at using her as a example. Yeah, she's fucking constantly, hard, she's just yeah. constantly getting Sorry, shit. Yeah. But um, yeah, she's y- not gonna hear this. Uh, yeah. Oh no, she totally yeah. <laughs> millions of followers. <laughs> um, but like, yes, yeah, so you get this character in the same way that she believed in her own invincibility. Mm. It kept her on that la- on that path, and mm. a lot of people were thought she's invincible. In the same way, some of these other people probably believe in their own failure. You know, that they are perpetually yeah, destined to lose. So they, right. they're just kind of like, no, nah, well, fuck it. 
Yeah. I like I like the experience of the fight. I mean, because there's a massive adrenaline it's rush. Like it's like that owning it kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm taking your power away. I know I'm, I know I'm going to lose. I don't care. I'm tough. I'm still getting in there. Yeah. It's there's there. a great um hardcore band, one of my favorite bands of all time, called Every Time I Die. And one of the songs that they talk about, one of the lyrics, he says, um, I can't remember what he says at the beginning, and then he says, or am I killing myself before they get me? Yeah. And it's that exact thing. It's like, uh, and comedians do this really well. It's like so self-deprecating that you yeah. can't even make fun of me because I'm, yeah. I'm such a piece of shit that like I can't get any worse. Definitely. So then nothing you can say is going to hurt me anyway. Yeah, like Eminem and fucking 8 Mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn the tables on that. Yeah. Like, I don't have an yeah, ego. Yeah, <laughs> tell these people something they don't know about me. Or yes, yeah, exactly. For sure. And the magic in that and the beauty in that, which I really appreciate, is this... And and it goes back again to that being honest with yourself, that self reflection. It's not that, and what Eminem did in that song is the idea that like, I know everything there is to know about me, and I've come to terms with all of it. Mm. Nothing you can say or do is gonna hurt me, so I don't mm. give a fuck. And Russell Brand kind of did that in real life. Mm. Do you ever follow much of what he does? Oh, uh, to? to be honest, I've heard him on a couple of podcasts, but I don't like. He honestly, he's too he's too quick for me. I, I'm not smart enough to keep up with him. He's, <laughs> Yeah, he's it's intense. Like, he's too sharp. I'm like, I can't, I can't follow, you know? Yeah. He's fucking intense. But yeah, he's kind of done a similar thing like that. Like, you can't really cut him down for anything because he's already addressed all of the fucked up shit he's ever done in his life and That's he's already it. come to terms with it. So yeah. like, if you've got nothing to hide, yeah. then no one can really call you out on anything. No, that's right. And I think like that, and uh, so it's that thing, like being the closest version to your honest, or the closest you can be to the honest version of yourself, the less da- damage you can take. Like they say, what well, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. Yeah, like, that's if you it, completely... Eh? If you are wearing that glass house, it doesn't matter. You yeah, know, it completely sure. doesn't matter. And Definitely. I think it also keeps you out of those biases too. Like, so if I have an awareness of my actual truth, so say I'm one of these people that constantly gets beat all the time, but mm-hmm. my truth is that I just want to get in there and enjoy the fight. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't buy into my own story that I was going to lose all the time, I think the chances of winning would be much greater. Yeah, for sure. Because you do, you you've got to have some fucking resilience to go in and get beat constantly. I hate Definitely. fucking losing. Do you know yeah, the, the voice? <laughs> <laughs> the voice in my head that all the time when I'm in a fight, anytime one of the voices starts being like, "Oh, you're a bit tired. You're gonna lose." Yeah. My other voice in my head's like, "Fuck that! I'm not losing." Mm. And every time, no matter what, I will do exactly. My problem is I do exactly what it takes to win. I do exactly you enough. You don't go above and beyond. No, I don't think so. You just get the job done. I think that I, I, and I think like what you're saying before is that some people don't have that will to hurt somebody else. That's always been my battle. I get in there and I will do it. You feel bad for them or something. It's not even that complex, like because my brain doesn't think of any in any complexity at all when I'm mm. fighting. Like it's so mm. animalistic. Like I am just so it's so simple. It's just that when I see the opportunity or I see something happening, I'll mm. pull back at the last second. And I don't know what the fuck it is. It's mm. like an automatic... And I really... Well, you mean like you feel like you've got them sort of half peeled over and you see that where that uppercut had landed and just really finish it and you just don't end up not throwing it or... Not that much awareness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even at all. How many, no. fight, how many fights you had now? 11. 11, wow. Yeah. So that's a good, good number. You're fucking getting up there. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, I've only lost one of them so wow, far. Wow, good so stuff. It was good because I've got that thing in my head where I'm like, don't lose, bitch. You know, like yeah. whatever you do. But that's my problem is that I go exactly enough to not lose. Yeah. And then I'm always like a bit surprised at the end. I look around and be like, what did I win that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's never, I've never been an impressive fighter, I don't think. None of my fights are like, ooh, yeah, she's really. Right. And, and except for, with the exception of those two fights that I said before where I felt like I completely zoned in and I was yeah. focused. But Are they more, like your two most recent ones? Uh, no, my last two recent ones were at Nationals and one was the worst fight I've ever had probably mm. yet. And the second one was a mismatch the girl shouldn't have been in the ring with me and i sort okay. of just yeah i did what i had to do my nose was broken from the day before and I, my toe was dislocated oh, from the fight the day before yeah because i had a really tough fight the day before mm. and then the next day i went in and because i couldn't get hit in the head i knew if i got hit in the face it was going to drop me so mm. i just basically grabbed onto her head and need the shit out of her until mm. she gave up oh i did what i had to do to yeah. win the fight you know yeah but um no yeah so it was three fights before that was when i fought demi McNamara on the um, tag team okay. show. It was just I don't know what happened. I just like focused every time she walked towards wait, me. So you two fought? Were you wait? Is that tag team? Oh no no not in the tag. No oh no yeah, we I didn't fight with the, Melina. Wasn't no. that um 
That was when she fought with you. Fought with Demi. You fought with Demi against on the same time. Uh, pro fight or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, Staunch. Staunch. Staunch, yeah. And then, so I, no, this was the next tag team after that. that okay. Me and Demi fought each other just right. in a normal right. fight. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was just a, it's just an amazing thing. I see her stepping forward and my hands on her face before she can move. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, but um, what I was getting at was that I always had this weird thing. Like when I feel like my hand makes contact with someone's head, I mm. don't like the feeling. I hate their skull in my hand. Yeah. I hate the feeling of it. So I always win fights by knees because I can't feel it. <laughs> I, I know it's probably hurting them worse. Cause so yeah. it's not rational. This That's is so a rational weird. fear. Well, it's is like, that it, but it's not like, oh, that probably hurt. I shouldn't do that. It's more just just like you don't like that yeah. feeling. I just don't like it. So it's like my body just naturally oh, kind of recoils from it. I have it no hurt? fucking idea. No. No, I had to feel no pain. I feel nothing. It's just I walk in there. And and that's the crazy thing is that I will grab onto someone and hold them and knee the fuck out of their body. Have you ever knocked someone out with a punch? Or you have knocked it, you, knocked, you stopped the knee of your opponents? No, well, you have through yeah, the knees? Yeah, two, two of them and both through knees. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I can go there because I can't feel it on my knees but even though it's probably causing them more damage that's Maybe. the stupidest thing I've I don't ever know done. what would you rather have fuck dance or fuck knees probably fuck knees right yeah I guess so I don't know well and because it doesn't hurt my knees to go yeah. into them do you know what oh, I mean oh sorry like, them more damage yeah. yes that's what that's what I mean yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm causing them more damage probably yeah, to yeah. their body it probably hurts a lot more by me jamming my knees right into the middle of their probably, sternum probably yeah and, but still for some reason in my head I'm like I'm being good to you yeah <laughs> That's so weird. I know. Yeah. Oh, maybe you need to talk and do something where there's no punches. Oh, I know. I have. I really enjoyed jujitsu. That was one of my favorite yeah, things. Cool. But I stopped training jujitsu because I was fighting. Because I ended up. I always yeah, um, sprained my toes. I know. I know. I'm the same. I've been doing jujitsu for like nine nine years, but maybe yeah, maybe a little bit less. Maybe eight or nine years. But just can never get any consistency because you just get fucking injured. I know. BJJ is. Better for your head, worse for your body. You know? <laughs> yeah, it really uh, is. Yeah. Like neck and shoulders. My neck and shoulders are always just fucked. Yep. And toes beyond anything. But what I wanted to ask you, though, is that you said before that you had two years off before oh, yeah. that fight. So you had been winning all of your fights, and yep. then you had two years off. What caused uh, I went, that? I went traveling, basically. Yeah, Were I you was, just... Yeah, no, what was something I mean, inside like your brain? 20, I was 21, I think, or 20 or 21. And, um, and I was like, I need to do this at some point, you know, yeah. um, and it's not, it's not, I don't feel like I'm getting old, so I can take a, take a little while. If I was planning on taking six months, but ended up taking like 14 months and then came back and took a while before I got back in the ring, you know, mainly because I just punished my liver so hard. It took, it was, <laughs> took such a long time to get, to get back, you know. Where'd you go? Um, all over. Yeah. I was like, went up through. Southeast Asia, Middle East, Europe, North America, South America, back to North America, you know. So it's like, yeah, it was a long roundabout way of doing it. I didn't really have a plan. It was just, like, where do I go next, you know. By yourself? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was Sick. good fun. Did you have any ayahuasca in South America? I didn't, know. No, didn't. No, it wasn't really a thing back then, you know. Yeah. Well, it probably was, but it wasn't commercialized like it is now, mm. you know. Yeah, that would have been interesting, but... uh no. I, I had it on my balcony recently. Did and you? I had it in the middle of fight camp too. It was so <laughs> fucked up. Hell. I should oh, never man. have done that. Yeah. <laughs> it was this is a bad me. time for self-reflection. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst time. Especially being a person that like, I question whether I should be fighting in general as my nature. And then yeah. all of a sudden I'm sitting in there face to face with every demon inside me. Like, yeah. This is not a good idea. Yeah. Fuck that. I oh, think man. I think I gave myself like adrenal fatigue because Maybe. of how intense that experience was. And I was two weeks out from a fight, so oh, then man. then I was cut cutting weight. I don't know, man. Oh, uh, I'd I'm an slap my guys if they did that. Oh like, uh, no. I you know I'd tell them like just don't smoke weed for a couple of weeks. You know, like yeah, I can't that, smoke weed. Yeah, even no, nah, not for me. You know, not not in the in the, at least the two weeks out from a fight. And I even in the last three fight camps because I think I was starting to question why I was fighting so mm. much. I stopped smoking weed full stop because yeah. it, it's too self reflective for me. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's like that's like you're saying like comedians. You know, comedians all smoke weed. There's so much self reflection goes on. Yeah, I don't know if that's a fucking good thing sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know sometimes. Well, this I this is my thought on the old self reflection thing. Is like with in martial arts, 
you kind of have, you have sort of have this team of people that are forcing you to have a look at yourself mm. and giving you the tools to improve. Mm. Whereas a lot of people that tend to do this, especially with drugs or psychedelics on their own, have no fucking guidance, no idea. And they're being faced with shit that they probably, sh- like in their conscious waking mind, aren't prepared to deal with because mm. that's the only reason they appear when you're unconscious. Yeah. And so then you're there sitting there face to face with shit that you don't know how to deal with with no guidance, no help, and then mm. you just feel fucking mental. Mm. And give up on it. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I can't smoke weed because it makes me paranoid and shit. And it's like, that's true. Mm. But it's not necessarily the weed that makes you paranoid. It's the sensation that you're experiencing of being hyper aware of yourself that mm. makes you paranoid. Yeah, but even that's not good, you know, I don't think. like. No, man, not yeah. at all. And especially not with without help, without yeah. somebody to help kind of like talk you through, you through it. it. Yeah, yeah man. maybe. Because it's like, yeah, I mean, I don't know, that's me too. Like, oh, fuck, I'll get paranoid as shit on weed. And then, right, like the things I'll be talking about, uh, talking to myself about if I was high, I'll think about it later and go, why was I worried about that? Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, why was, why was I even thinking about that? It seemed like such a big deal, you know? Mm. So I just, I just stay away from it for that reason, you know? Like, Do you get that when you're drinking? No. No. It's a funny thing. I'm the opposite. I, when I'm high, I feel like I'm with a friend. Mm. <laughs> you the other version of me yeah, inside yeah. myself but when with I'm God, yeah. when I'm with God definitely I'm communing with Jesus that's right um, but when I'm drunk all of the negative self talk all of the doubt all of the you're a piece of shit appears well, like, floods me it's yeah. so crazy and most of the people I know are kind of exactly the opposite mm, interesting I know no no I'm, I'm no, not like that on the drink but, which is lucky I guess or maybe it's unlucky. That's the only thing I, I, I think about is like, it's a good thing that I don't enjoy smoking, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a really good thing because now, now I just don't want to do it, you yeah. know? Like, it'd be good if I if I hated alcohol too because then that'd be another thing that, you know, it'd be like, all right, fight camp's over. Let's go party, you know? Yeah, so, I yeah. I know. Do you, you don't struggle with it too bad though, like when it's time to get into fight camp? Switch on? No, yeah. not at all. No, no. No, because the, the consequences are too great, you know? Yeah, man. It's yeah, like, fucks you up. Yeah, like I'll, I'll go above and beyond in terms of, you know, most people sort of stay out. I tell the guys, minimum four weeks, no drinking, you know. Um, but I'll do eight, I might do ten. Yeah. You know, um, and I'll be training before the eight, so I'll be like full full training all the time, all the way up. I'll just make sure I cut out all the bullshit, all the, all the junk food and all that at, at, at the eight weeks, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's never like, oh, shit, I can't drink anymore. It's like... Fuck, I, I, I can't drink because I, the, yeah, it's not, it's not, I'm missing it. It's like, no, fuck, I can't do that, you know? Yeah. So, well, the stakes are too high, and especially yeah, now right. at this point, yeah, you got to be 100% the best version of you possible. Yeah, well, I mean, every fight's, every fight's just, just as important, isn't it? You know, I don't think I've ever had a fight where I've gone, ah, oh, this is just a fight, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I'm, a, I'm a little bit different like that, you know? I've only had 24 or five fights. Um, you know, whereas other people, the guys I'm fighting have had like 50 fights, 70 fights. Yeah, you true. Know? So I, I don't fight that frequently. I sort of make them count, you know. So yeah. I'm not just showing up for another fight. Here's another fight. Oh, why don't you fight this guy? Doesn't interest me. Yeah. You know, I, I get offered all the time. I'm not going to say who, but I go off and fight this person. I'm like, nah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, well, why don't you have, well, I'll have you and this guy on. You know, just just earn a bit of money on that one. I'm like, nah. It's not yeah. worth it. Nah, man. money comes and goes. You know, yes. like at the end of the day, it's not like it's not like I'm happy to fight for free because you know money comes and goes and whatever. Um, at the end of the day, I don't want to feel like I'm getting ripped off. Uh, you, you know, those is, for instance, I'll happily fight for free as an amateur, but that's because that's what you do as an amateur boxer. You know, you'll fight, you go and fight for free, but when it's like fighting as a professional Muay Thai fighter, I won't, I, you know, you sort of have a standard you try and set. You don't want to go backwards and that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, cause like well, and the amount of damage and stress on your body for going through some shit like that, it's not worth it. Yeah, no, that's, that's right. Well, it is. It is worth it because at the end of the day, as long as I'm, you know, getting further towards the ultimate goal, that's what, that's what the, the prize is. You know, the prize is the title, the world title or the Australian title, whatever it might be. Or getting a step closer to that title. That's yeah. That's why you you know that's why you go for the fight, not because you're going to get a little bit of money at the end of it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just not enough to make it worth your while. And at the end of the day, you know that I'll get that money, and that money is going to be gone in mm. however long. 
um, no matter how much it is, it's always going to go. But yeah. that title that you won will all like always be there, even though it's not. You can't go and sell it. You also can't go and buy it. Yeah, nobody you know? can. Yeah. So, what is your what's the ultimate goal for you? Like at the end of all this, do you think? Um, I don't know. Hey. Just keep yeah. going. Yeah, I don't like. I don't think about it too much because, Good. you know, I think I think it. I think if you build it up to be like, you know, this, once I get this, I'm, that's going to be, I'm going to be fulfilled, you know, uh, yeah, I think you're just setting yourself up for disappointment, yep. you know, and sort of realize that the more, the more times I win, it's not like, yes, I finally have the Australian title. It's like, ah, oh, it's done. Thank fuck. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. And then there's another one looming over the yeah, horizon. That's it. There's always something bigger. There's always someone more challenging. That's right. You know, and, and no matter what you do, it'll never be enough. Mm. You know, you'll never get that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm done. You know, like uh, I remember hearing, I think it was Rashad Evans. I think uh, was it Brennan Shaw or something was talking about it. Or he, he went out back backstage after Rashad just won his world title and he was crying because he was like, I don't feel any different, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't remember the story exactly, but I think it was something like that. Yeah, I thought that's pretty interesting. I'm like, mm, yeah, I wonder if that's what I'll feel. But I, at the end of the day, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not thinking that me winning a world title is going to solve every problem, you know, that I'll ever face uh, face in my life. You know, oh, it's all worthwhile now that I won the world title. It's just basically, it's just like, well. At least I didn't do it all for nothing, you know. I've yeah, given ten, 10 years to something, and at the end of the day, I do have something to, something that no one else has. And yeah, you know, like it yeah. sort of makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, right. Don't solve any problems. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider yourself relatively happy overall that you're on the right track doing what you want to be doing? Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, that's something I don't think about too much either. It's like, am I happy? Oh, like, I know. Yeah. You fucking overthink yourself into a pit. Oh, I should, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. no, I, I, don't, I stay away from that question a little bit too, you know. Not because I'm afraid of what will come. It's just that I think the more you think about it, the like, the more you realize you're missing what you're missing or whatever. Unless you're like one of those people who like constantly practices gratitude or something like that. I think that's a bit different. Mm. But like, am I happy, you know? Well, and what does happiness even mean? Like that's, that's, that's such it. a it, it is such a wavering term. It's something that constantly fluctuates and in ins and outs. And you kind of like I uh, it's always a question I struggle with. Like I wake up in the morning of and it's just like, well, I just have to do the things I said I was going to do yeah. and keep going. And hopefully that overall I'm steering my boat in a direction that I feel comfortable. Yeah, with. that's right. And yeah. I'm putting in, I guess, my best every day. Yeah. And it is. There's always those weird little challenges, like little nervous things that you come up against. It's like all the time you face a bit of resistance. Like nah, I'm going to run away. No, hold on. Is that, why, is that why you're yeah. fighting? Like I always, yeah, for up to my 10th fight, uh, ninth, ninth fight, the reason I fought was to not give up on myself, mm. to prove that I was going to see something through all the way to the end and be the best version of me possible mm. and, and go in there and just do it and not give up on myself. Because my historically, like all the artwork I've ever made, I mean, the reason why it's all sitting in here and not out there in the world mm -hmm. is because I give up on myself. I don't trust that I've got the skill or ability or whatever. Mm. But I know now... That's Sorry, sorry to cut you off. That's always something that I never understood about artwork is like... It's supposed to be a, like, or paintings, I should say. It's supposed to be like, this is my interpretation of it and it doesn't matter what other people think. Mm. Then why is it such a, everyone look at my artwork thing? You know what I mean? Well, because I'm I... I'm not judging, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I think that there is... In any kind of self-expression, there's yeah. an element of self-indulgence to it. Yeah. And I think, for me at least, I want to feel like whatever I'm doing is connecting to somebody in a meaningful way. And mm -hmm. if I don't feel like that's working, I start to question why I did the thing. Yeah. So then I'm, I wonder if it's just me, you know, like having just indulging myself, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm just doing this shit because I want people to look at me or I want attention or something gross like that. And so that it's always, it's always the second guess. It's like, is this worth being put out? Nah, nah, it's just me being in self indulgent. Yeah. Yeah. So that's always kind of the question And this probably does come down to in the same way that we have doubt you have the potential to have doubt when you walk into the ring because you know you didn't put in your best work i'm the same with artwork because like i've never studied it i've never trained in it anything it's just mm. always been something i did to express myself when i felt like i wanted to mm. and so because of that i have a doubt that i'm not connecting in a greater way in mm. a more meaningful way out to the world so i think i'm embarrassed to put it out there because mm. i don't think that there is any value in it 
Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it's like, yeah. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to put it out in case people tell you that there's no value. And it's like, yeah, and I yeah. imagine that getting a feedback loop. And that's the stupidest yeah. thing about it because the feedback loop would actually help me. It's the same thing as like getting Lomachenko getting knocked down. I need that feedback loop to help me get better. Cause so, if it, yeah, because you, you, you think that people saying, what is that? That's garbage is going to make you try harder to right. create better art. Yeah, be more connected to the thing I'm trying to do and say. And I think that's a lot of... I have a bunch of different weird outlets of shit that I produce, things that I make, Mm -hmm. because I'm all the time trying to find what is my authentic voice? What is the thing that's actually going to be contributing in a meaningful way? Yeah, I think that's a funny thing. Like, But everyone thinks that that, what's my thing, you know? Mm. Like, what's what's my thing? You know, the thing isn't... a thing isn't a thing because you connect with it. It's because you're fucking obsessed with it, you know? <laughs> like, it's not like, I'm oh, fuck, I love fighting. I love Muay Thai, you know? Like, it's just a, it's more of an obsession of like, no, I need to do this. I need to do I just this. need to keep doing it. Yes, yeah, I need to exactly. Do this. I need and then it always this. pulls you back. Like, you're always going, having to go back to it, yeah, go back to it. That's right. I no, still got unfinished business there. I need to keep doing that. I need yeah. to keep doing that. It's not like, oh, I love this. This is fucking, where would I rather be? This is the best thing ever. It's like, my jam's not perfect. I need yes. a harder leg kick. I need a harder kick. I need to get that cross perfect. I need to knock someone out with this cross, not just hurt them. You know, like mm-hmm. it's it's that constant refinement because it's an obsession. Not, oh, I love this so much. It feels so good. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like that's where people have fully gotten off track, in my opinion. As everybody's like, just do what makes you happy. Yeah, just yeah. do what makes you. Happy. And it's like, no man, fighting doesn't feel good. No, nah, none of this need shit. to do, man. You know, yeah, like, you do what you yeah. have to do to achieve that. Thing. Yeah. And that's why I call it connection because it is like you really have to find your authentic you, the best version of you, the best thing you can possibly do to get to whatever that thing is. And mm. and I find like anytime I'm off of that, if I'm trying too hard, if I'm trying to be impressive, I'm looking for the knockout, that's when shit falls apart because mm. you lost that connection. Yeah, well, that might be, I guess, the same like with the art, isn't it? Like if you're trying to make the perfect picture. Yeah, I'm trying to make it commercialized. I want people to look at it yeah. and tell me I'm good. I want people to r- lift me up on a chair and fucking take me through yeah. a crowd of people adoring fans. Like, cause I fuck that. Well, that's a that's be a hard thing, especially like with this what you're doing with like a podcast. Is like, what do people want to listen to? Oh you know? yeah. What do people want to hear? It's like shit, and it's so easy to fall into that trap. It's got to be like, who do who do people want to listen to me talk yeah. to? You know. And the yeah, more how many likes that, can I get? I need more likes, need more listeners, yeah, share it. You know? That's right, you know. So the more you more you fall into that trap, the you know, I guess I guess you it's a, you like I was saying before, you own the fact that it's like I'm doing this purely as a way for me to, you know, Navigate have have world. interesting conversations. Because how often do anyone sit sit and talk like this if there's yeah. not okay, we're gonna do a co- podcast and record it and blah blah blah. You know, yeah, people that you'd never sit down and talk to, you get the opportunity to sit down in a room with no distractions and talk shit for exactly. Ages. I fucking love Imagine it. Imagine Melina said, Hey, Ben, can you come down? My friend wants to talk to you. I'm like, <laughs> like eh, Bitch, I got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, she's really interesting. I swear, you're like, Nah, yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> what's right. in it for me. That's it. That's it. I get to I get my voice recorded, get posted on Facebook. That's that's enough for me. Oh, funny, it's funny. It's funny when you really break it down how sad all. it is, right? It's you know? so stupid, but yeah. I'm the same. I mean, I. I talk to Melina about this shit all the time. Like, yeah. like, cause I'll put a podcast out and then like, you know, and I'm, th- I'm like fucking stoked that this person is sitting in my room with me. Like, especially like the last two people I've had in here are just incredible musicians. And it's just like, Oh my God, everybody, everybody's got to see this. And then that you post it up and like the next day there's like three likes yeah. and it just, my soul crushes. It just yeah. feels like I've literally walked on stage naked and everyone just took one look and was like, I'm out. You yeah, know, yeah, I know. Gone. I know. You, you mean. feel so, and then I just have to remember like, all the time I'm like that's not what I'm doing this yeah. for and fuck if if I had 3,000 paid likes and not one of them actually listened to the podcast I yeah. couldn't give a fuck but if those three people sat down and listened to that yeah. podcast and cared enough that they pushed the like button fucking sweet it's almost that's me doing my it's job it's almost better that you don't Absolutely, get the likes yeah. because you know then that's not going to be a drive for you and then mm. you'll be able to keep doing what you're doing and not just like end up how can I make this more enjoyable to listen? Yeah. More, more enjoy, more enjoyable for people to listen to. You know, and as long as you're serving the purpose of this is my, you know, this is what I want to do. Um, and creating I had, meaning. I, I saw another. I did a podcast with another guy. Um, it wasn't even a podcast. It was just a comedy. Oh, thing. Melina showed me this thing. Yeah, <laughs> Benny the Bleed. That one. Yes. Yeah, he's so funny. So funny. Yeah. Um, you know, and he was he like I think he makes it awesome. Awesome thing, like he has real podcasts, but that one was just like a comedy outlet for him, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, 
Now, I don't know. He he doesn't do them very often. He was pretty committed, like, I want to do this more. I love this so much. I fucking love it. But he's everything's so, like, there's so much production that's gone into it. Oh, uh, yeah. That it's like, and I wonder whether that's so that other people are going to enjoy it and keep watching or whether it's like, I want to make this perfect. Yeah. Because it's almost like, fuck, how do I make it good enough for people to like, I can't put out a subpar product and that's sort of holding him back, you know? Yeah, you yeah know when you I mean? get, yeah, you get caught up in the substance, you forget, yeah. or sorry, you get ca- caught up in the surface, you get lost with the substance, the substance disappears. Mm. It's the same thing, mass production. I mean, exactly like we very first started talking about, like you can become something authentic or you can be the costume that people buy. Mm. And in my opinion... Anytime you're falling down the track where you become a costume, you've got to pull your shit back and be back to your authentic self. Yeah, how to do, how to do on your own. It is. Yeah. And it's good that you've got a good team of people around you to help you keep you straight. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, I hope and so. And you sound like I, you've got a fucking head on you anyway. Yeah. We'll keep you, keep you together. We'll be here. We'll, I don't know. we'll yeah, be here. We'll right. just put this podcast back to you anytime. Uh, you know what? I don't even, I, don't even, <laughs> I think it's just kind of like... You see other people that take themselves so seriously. Ah, oh, isn't it? And you're like, I know. oh, fuck. I don't want to be that guy. I know, yeah. but you catch yourself at it sometimes. Like, I've listened yeah. to the stuff that I've done and been like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> shut up, man. Yeah, yeah. Who do you <laughs> that's you the sort of thing that happened, man. That's the sort of thing that happened if I smoke weed. I just think, <laughs> <laughs> no, no more. Oh, good. You should smoke more weed. No. I'm just joking. <laughs> don't do it. Fuck, I'd be a recluse. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just stay in a corner. That's it. Uh, man, well, this is awesome talking to you. We've been talking for over an hour, so I'll let you get back to your No worries, life. yeah. I've, I've, damn, yeah, i got to go. So Good chatting to you. Yeah, look at the clock once, so <laughs> that's, that's great, good. yeah. And best of luck, when can, where can people find you if they need to find you? Um, I will be fighting on Destiny, which is the 27th of October for the WBC World title. Good against, shit. Um, oh, Jesus, how did I forget his name? I've had a mind blank. Melina, do you know do you remember his name? From England. Edwards. Oh, yes. Edwards. Yeah, Dan Edwards. Dan Edwards. I don't know. Okay, yeah, cool. I, don't, I don't know how I forgot that. Uh, yeah, shit. Dan Edwards from England. So Destiny, where is that? Uh, Mansfield Tavern. Oh, good shit. Up yeah. Here. Cool, yeah. man. So right near right near my where I live. It's going to be cool. good. All Logan's going to be there. Yeah, don't we'll be there scare in you force. Off. <laughs> <laughs> we will be there. Yeah. Good shit, man. And you're on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I don't have like a fucking fan page or anything like that. You just fight and yeah, knock people Yeah, whatever. You know, good shit, man. Like, it's the same thing, you know, like, what do I need a fan page? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Cool. Well, cool. Good All right. Talk. Thank you so much. That was good. Right.